How y'all doing, family? This is Chris Rod with Media TV, and you already know how we doing it. We coming with the latest NBA news. We coming with the latest social news. We coming with the latest movie news. You know how we do it. Okay, family. Uh, so it says Tapper Grill Sheriff over school shooting response. Okay. Uh, I'm about to play this whole video, so like certain things, you know, I might stop it, then I'll come with my comments, then play it again, stop it again. So uh, let's let's go into it. Let's get into it. Sheriff, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. I want you to take a listen to uh, Stoneman Douglas High School senior Brandon Huff talking about your deputy, the school resource officer, Scott Peterson. The school resource officer was behind a stairwell wall, just standing there, and he had his gun drawn, and he was just pointing it at the building. And you could, shots started going off inside. You could hear them going off over and over. He was just talking on the radio, and he never did anything for four minutes. He's the only one with a gun. He's wearing a bulletproof vest, and all, you know, he has all that while school security guards, you know, coaches pretty much, were running in, shielding kids. Sheriff, how do you respond to the student? All what the students said, uh, our video and audio and uh, all the witness statements we uh, have, have taken corroborates that. That's what I saw. Um, and when I saw that, um, I was disgusted. I was uh, just demoralized with the uh, performance of former Deputy Peterson. And that's why I called him in and uh, uh, suspended him without pay as we were going to move towards termination. And, and he resigned. Did he tell you why he didn't go in? He did not. I'm also told by sources in Coral Springs that Coral Springs police who arrived at the scene uh, saw that three other Broward deputies were standing behind cars, not having gone into the building. What can you tell me about that? Well, let me be perfectly clear. Uh, our investigation to this point shows that during this horrific attack, while this killer was inside the school, there was only one law enforcement person uh, Period, and that was uh, former Deputy Scott Peterson. Um, Coral Springs arrived. A group of Coral Springs officers went in uh, within, I think, about four minutes. We're, we're projecting uh, after the killer left the campus. The uh, I understand that they're going to give statements to us uh, regarding the other three, four, five deputies. At this point, we have no reason to believe that anyone acted incorrectly or correctly. That's what an investigation is. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but nobody's entitled to their own set of facts. We do know, Jake, that uh, Deputy Peterson at the time uttered, um, uh, he disseminated information over the police radio. We don't know why those dep if what those deputies heard. Perhaps they did something by what they heard from Peterson, uh, and that will be uh, you know uh, outlined in interviews. We'll get to the truth. But at this point, one deputy was remiss, dereliction of duty, and he's now no longer with this agency. Yeah, you're saying Peterson. Okay, family. Now check this out. It's funny how he just kind of like. <laughs> Like, they just throwing everything, like, the whole blame on uh, Scott Peterson, the officer. It's, it's really funny how they just throwing the whole blame on him. But it's not only him. It's not only him. Really, the real blame is the FBI. Because they had, what, 18... 18, they had 18 instances, instances where they could have stopped it. They could have stopped it. But you know how they do. When it's white people, when it's white people, they get to say anything they want to say. They get to do anything they want to do. And it's kind of like them empowering them, themselves to spread their racism and... It was kind of like as long as he was talking about, uh, Nicholas Cruz was talking about niggas and shit like that, black people and everything. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to let him uh, express his racism and shit. And then once, 
when the fire hit the fan, when uh, Nicholas Cruz came out and he carried out his duties <laughs> as the white supremacist and shot up the feet and shot up the school and shit like that and shot some people and injured some of them people and killed some of them people, you know. There was hiring, there was there was it was like the first couple of weeks, they was put into the fire to the FBI, put into the fire to the, the police uh and sheriff department and shit like that. So now Scott Peterson is the scapegoat of the FBI and the sheriff in the office for not doing their job to make sure they prevented that. It's really funny, family. And you're saying that because during the time that the shooter was in the school, you say Peterson was the only one there. But that's not, that wasn't known at the time. You know that now because of security cameras you saw when he left the school. This is Correct. after the fact. But when did your deputies, not Peterson but the others, when did they arrive on the scene? Because Coral Springs sources say when Coral Springs police arrived, there were Broward deputies there in addition to Peterson. And I don't dispute that, but that is an active investigation. We have not taken state, some statements yet from the Coral Springs officers. We found out, I believe, five or six uh, days ago from their police chief that uh, he told one of our colonels about the, inf about the information. We're going to be taking statements from those Coral Springs police officers. Well, then we're going to be speaking with our deputies. If any deputies uh, are alleged to have der uh, dereliction of duty, we'll look into that. Um, we don't know what the deputies heard heard on the radio, Coral Springs and, and uh, the Broward Sheriff's Office, we have different radio systems. So we don't know what one was hearing vis-a-vis -vis what the other was hearing. All I can tell you is we will investigate every action of our deputies, of their supervisors, and if they did things right, we'll move forward. And if they did things wrong, I will take care of business in a disciplinary manner like I did with uh, Peterson. And just, just so people who are watching at home understand. Well, sir, um... Mr. Mr. White Sheriff, uh, you talking about you're going to take uh, action if you found out other people didn't do their jobs. Well, first, you should be taking action against yourself and resigning from the, <laughs> from the position because you didn't do your job as well. You didn't do your job as well, sir. So uh, before you start taking action on anybody else, you need to remove your damn self first. Even after the shooter left the school, there was a period of time where nobody was going into the school, no law enforcement officers. People were bleeding out. Uh, the question, nobody knew that the shooter had left the school, so officers needed to go in. One of the things that we've heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, I can hope you can shed some light on it, is that there might have been a stand-down order. Somebody on the radio telling Broward deputies not to enter the school until a SWAT team arrived. What can you tell us about that? I can't tell you anything about that. I, I haven't heard that. As I said, we feverishly are dissecting. It's a voluminous investigation. We're taking hundreds and hundreds of statements. And right now, Jake, the focus of this agency is on the successful prosecution of the killer. So we're, we're, we're doing that. Our detectives have worked tirelessly. We will investigate all aspects of, of this case. We will look at... They're on a successful prosecution of the killer. What? This motherfucker said it's successful. No, you're not on a successful. Because if y'all was, the shooter be dead right now. The shooter be dead right now. And, or, or the motherfucker could have got the electric chair. No, but they didn't, they didn't want to give him that because, oh, he got mental illness. He doesn't know what he was doing. He just, he just, nobody want to hear that bullshit. Mental illness. Every time when they fucking do something, do a, a, a fucking mass shooting or anything, it's always an excuse of fucking uh, mental illness bullshit. He ain't got no fucking mental illness. That's what you white devils are. You just like fucking shooting. You like going around killing people. And you take pride into that shit. 
all the actions or, or inactions of every single deputy and leader on our agency, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, and we'll make some decisions. But right now, all I can tell you is, during the, during the killing, there was a, while the killer was on campus with this horrific killing, uh, there was one deputy, one armed person within the proximity of that school, and that was Peterson. Everything else is fluid, and uh, as I said, we will get to the truth. But right now, people could have conjecture, people could act on rumors, and people have, you know, everybody has the right to their own opinion, but nobody has the right to their own set of facts. Have you listened to facts? the actual... Hold on, sir. Uh, Mr. Mr. White uh, Cave uh, Sheriff, how can you only say that it was only one officer... Um, only one officer at the, uh, right there by the door, you know, on the scene. When you didn't even look at the damn tape yet. You didn't even look at the tape yet. <laughs> These motherfuckers here. I'll come out. Have you listened to the radio recordings? Yeah, I'm not, but uh, the investigators are, of course. Uh, okay, they're, you they're, haven't. You have not, doing, you have not heard them, though. No, but what they're doing now is they're marrying up the uh, audio with the visual. And I was... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had to stop that right there. How the fuck you going... This motherfucker... So they're trying to match the audio with the visual. Now, check this out, family. Check this out. Think about this. Okay. If you're going to match up the audio with the visual. Okay. With Nicholas Cruz shooting the people. How do y'all know it was Nicholas Cruz that actually shot the people? How do y'all know that? Because you didn't. The video didn't show him shoot nobody. It didn't show him shoot nobody. So how do you actually know it was him? I'm just playing devil's advocate right now. How do y'all know it was actually him? Only way y'all actually know it was him because from the uh, past in incidents of him posting stuff on uh, social media and stuff like that. That's the only way. But if he would have never posted none of the social media and stuff like that, or they would have never got any calls, they wouldn't have known it was him. Now he said uh with the uh with the audio okay you can you can have somebody somebody can be standing on a voice on the audio uh stand down or go in and stuff like that and they may they may not know who it was what sheriff it was you feel what I'm saying uh um deputy was so it, it just really contradict what what he's saying it, it don't really add up to what the fuck he's saying family it don't add up to what he's saying. It's kind of like, okay, if I can't if I can't match the video with the audio, then basically it's kind of like saying they didn't do it. Told uh, that one of the uh, one of Peterson's utterances on the radio, I think one or two times he actually says shots fired. So you would have to assume at that time, every person who heard that transmission is pushing as fast as they can, code three as we call it, to the school, to the school, identify the threat, neutralize the target, take the killer out. There comes a point in time later that Peterson makes a transition that would almost lead one to believe that he's talking about perimeters. So if, if I know my school, my school resource deputy is talking about perimeter positions, it's absolutely safe to assume incorrectly, if, if, that's, if that's what actually happened, it's absolutely safe to assume that if a, a person there is talking about perimeter, that perhaps he sees the killer leaving and, and, and you're going to a perimeter position to catch the killer. But I don't know what was in the mind of the other deputies. I don't know what was in the mind of Peterson. This, this is why we investigate. All I can tell you is that uh, from right. the time I heard about this, I, I did what needed to be done with the sheriff, former Deputy Peterson. The Thursday, the day after uh, the horrific uh, incident at a vigil. Your whole fucking staff need to be fired. If you ask me, your whole staff need to be fired. Because y'all didn't do what y'all needed to do. 
Mr. White Man. Your whole staff needed to be fired. The city manager for Coral Springs confronted you in public, and one of the things he confronted you about, sources tell me, is the idea that your deputies did not go into the school while children inside were bleeding out. That's absolutely untrue. We had a conversation. Uh, we were out in public. The only two people who could have heard the conversation were myself and, and the city manager. Uh, it was a conversation. I'm not going to share that conversation. It was very short. The city manager and I have spoken numerous times. Uh, we've met. He's a great city manager. He does a great job okay. with Coral Springs. We got a great relationship. And it was just two guys having a conversation. One of the questions about uh, the response by Broward is whether this was policy to set up a perimeter instead of going in. Earlier this week, you seem to suggest that your deputies are trained to arrive and not immediately go into the site of the shooting, but rather to create a staging area. Listen to yourself a few days ago talking about what you learned from the Fort Lauderdale airport shooting 13 months ago. Take a listen. One of the key lessons we learned from the airport was the phenomenon of self-dispatching and not allowing deputies and police officers from all over the Tri-County area to just arrive haphazardly. And we had staging areas and people who came went to a staging area and they were inserted into the mission in a, in a common sense way and everybody had a job to do. So that seems, to, that sounds to a lot of people like... So basically... What well, Scott Peterson actually did, family, <laughs> he actually did his job. He actually did his job because that's what they normally do. And it came out of the sheriff's mouth, his own fucking mouth. It came out of his own damn mouth that they do staging areas that they don't just run inside into the killer and stuff like that. So basically that that's that like I said um before the um video started this was a this was a a, a scapegoat for them and the FBI to throw all the whole blame on officer Scott Peterson The opposite of what police forces learned after Columbine which is when you arrive, well, then, you don't you know, wait, glad, you run in. I'm glad you asked that question. Jake, you're completely talking apples and oranges, and I'm glad you brought that up. When, when uh, we have a horrific incident of any magnitude, and the incident is over, and people are arriving to help, and we know we have 5, 10, 12 hours of work to do. We have our deputies, police officers, firefighters go to staging areas so we can insert them in a clear and concise manner into the scenario, into the event. An active shooter is completely different. As people were coming to the airport, we didn't have an active shooter. He was already in custody 72 seconds after the event. This is an active shooter. We push to the uh, to the entry to the killer we get in and we and we take out the threat completely different set okay. of circumstances sure. Jake. okay hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on family now check this out so what if they all right what if they would have um barged up in there what if four uh officers um would have barged through and just say, fuck it, we're just going to go, go on and take them out. Now, see, basically what you're actually doing is you're putting even more people at risk. Because if you're just going to run through that and not have a fucking plan on how you're going to take, take out the fucking shooter, you can, put, uh, you can risk more fucking lives uh, of getting shot because the motherfucker can uh, uh, have them as a hostage. You feel what I'm saying? And you just coming through that and just trying to barge your way and just start fucking shooting. You could be shooting innocent fucking people, stupid. These motherfuckers. And you got you got these fucking cave devils running this country. Don't have no fucking common sense. When did you find out that Deputy Peterson had not gone into the building? How soon after the shooting did you know that? 
Uh, not for days. Uh, we, uh, How many our days? investigators looked. I'm not sure. Because you spent much of the Wednesday night town hall on CNN a with the entire Stoneman Douglas community, students and teachers and parents, attacking the NRA, saying that police need more powers, more money to prevent future tragedies. You didn't disclose any of this to the crowd then, the Stoneman Douglas high school community. Did you know it then? Did you know it Wednesday night? It was spoken about during that uh, earlier during that day. I'm not on a timeline for TV or any news show. We need to get it right. Look, that was a look at that face, family. Look at that face. Tapper asked his ass a simple ass question, and he came back with a smart ass remark. I'm not on the timeline. I'm not on a. You know, to, on a timeline to report for any TV or news show. Basically, no, you're not on a timeline, but at the same time, them people want to know what the fuck that you know and what you didn't do and what you, what you failed to do your fucking job. You didn't do your job right. And then you actually think people are going to grant you more power? More power? Hell motherfucking no. Right now, y'all you, motherfucking has got too much of damn power right now. And y'all still can't do your fucking job right. So why the fuck would why the fuck would we grant you more fucking power? That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. Because basically what you're going to do is abuse it like y'all always do. And y'all fail terribly and miserably. We need to get it accurate. We're talking about people's lives. We're talking about a community. Uh, we need to corroborate. We yeah, y'all talking about white community. Y'all don't give a fuck about black community. White community. Y'all talking about your white lives. Your white lives matter. Nobody don't give a fuck about no damn white lives. Only y'all do. And what's, what's so funny is... <laughs> The shooter was a white man. He was a white. He was a white man. The white cave though <laughs> that committed a crime on y'all. <laughs> That's was even funny. That's was even funny. And y'all can't realize to see that y'all a danger to y'all damn selves. Y'all a danger to everybody. Everywhere y'all are, it's chaos. It's killings. It's murder. to verify and once we did the next day and I, w I looked at the tape and I was 100% certain that it happened the way uh, I was told about the investigators initially told me told about I didn't even release it you right you didn't look at second. the video I, I, one I, week after the shooting you hadn't looked at the video yet I looked at the video as soon as our investigators uh, it, it wasn't my job to look at the video it was investigators job hold on hold on sir son you are you see what I just said? The motherfucker, like right when, like right when it happened within that week, he didn't even look at the video. So how, if you didn't look at the video, how can you fucking say what you're saying? How can you say what you're saying right now if you didn't even look at the video? You basically going off of everybody's, um, everybody's uh, own different opinions of what happened. Shit crazy, man. To look at the video. I'm still sheriffing this, 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 uh, this county. There were many things to do. We have investigators, homicide investigators, internal affairs investigators dissecting it. And when they felt it, uh, there was a video that I, ready for my view that I might take action on one of our deputies, I looked at the video. And let me add this, Jake. Once I saw the video, the first order I gave was for our, our detectives to notify the families that the, of, of, the, uh, of the, uh, those lost, the, the, the families, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the families come first. And I wanted to make sure the families knew what happened and what was about but to the happen. Families were at the we CNN town hall, hall. Sir, 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 sir the, the families were at the CNN town hall, and you could have disclosed that's to not them. The, that's not, 
We didn't, I couldn't disclose it then because there was no corroboration, Jake. There was no confirmation. We needed to dot I's and cross T's. And I certainly would not dis disclose it to a family at a town hall. Not every family was there. Uh, one of the families, uh, one, uh, Mr. Pollock had gone to Washington, D.C. That's not the way All you right. do things over a news camera. You, you, you do it individually. You meet privately with families. You have compassion. You don't do it at a public right, forum. Right, but you're telling we weren't ready. Yeah, you, you have compassion for white families, but you don't have no compassion for black families. Y'all see what I'm talking about, family? See what I'm talking about? <laughs> only have compassion. They only have compassion for white families, but they don't have no compassion for black families. It's fucking devils, but that's what they fucking get. Tone at the anywhere. public forum, sir, your tone at the public forum was rather belligerent, belligerent towards the NRA, and you were talking about needing more police protection, I mean, more police f funding and more police powers, and yet that's, you knew, that, and yet... That's not... No, it's not, that wasn't your tone. That's not true. Jake, that's not true at all. I wasn't belligerent towards the NRA. I took a passionate stance, as I always have, about common sense gun reform and expanding police uh, ability throughout our country. This motherfucker still want to expand fucking police fucking powers. That's not going to happen. That is not going to fucking happen. Y'all not expanding shit. Y'all ain't expanding nothing, bro. That's not going to happen, man. And what I don't understand, check this out, family. How can you solve a problem, a gun problem with... <laughs> how can you solve a gun problem with... A gun problem versus more guns. What is that going to do? That's creating more shooting. And then another thing, uh, they're trying to, uh, President Trump trying to, uh, that fucking dumbass motherfucker. He, he, this stupid motherfucker is trying to arm the teachers. The teachers? What? You going to arm the teachers for what? They don't, the teachers... Teachers they self don't even get paid that fucking much. They still getting under they still getting paid underpaid right now. All around the world. Teachers still getting paid underpaid right now. So you telling me you want them to, to deal with uh kids. You want them to deal with kids. In some kids, you know, you know, some kids are special needs and some kids are not. But you know, um the the type of shit that teachers deal with at school, you want them to have guns? What if they get, what if they get uh, uh, tired of dealing, telling the kids, say, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, and, and they're they driving them crazy. And what if the fucking teacher shoot the damn kid? I don't want my fucking kids in no fucking school where, where a goddamn teacher have to have a gun. That automatically lets you know that it's not even safe being at school, period, if the teacher have to have a gun. When we come in contact with someone mentally ill, to take them to a facility to okay. take guns away from them. There was no belligerence at all, and I completely disagree with you. A medical, let's talk about the response. A medical first responder told local news station WSVN that medical personnel were asking to go into the school, but law enforcement wouldn't let them. He told uh, WSVN, quote, everything I was trained on mass casualty events says they did the wrong thing. You don't wait for the scene to be cleared. You go in immediately, armed, retrieve the victims. You can't leave the victims laying there. What's your response to that, sir? I agree, I agree with that. Uh, that that's, that's very accurate. That is, how, that is what you do. Once the, once the killer leaves the, leaves the scene of, of a mass casualty, it's still an, an active killer scene. There are people wounded, people that could, lives could be saved. And let me say this, Coral Springs Police, Broward Sheriff's deputies, we did carry people out there. These deputies and, these, uh, and the Coral Springs Police officers are credited with saving quite a few lives by getting people medical attention. But did you so prevent medical did people I, from going inside? No, you, once, the scene, once the scene is, medical people wouldn't go inside until you're sure that they're not going to get killed inside. Uh, we, we this, have, person we told WSVN, this person told WSVN Who did, he, he wanted to go in, this medical personnel, emergency first responder, wanted to go in and wasn't allowed to. 
Jake, I'm hearing that for the first time. I, 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 if, you, if you know who the person is, uh, please have him contact me or the Broward Sheriff's Office, and we will interview him. We will uh, take statements from him. And if that's true, that's certainly something we'll look into. Okay. But I'm hearing this for the first time. That's WSVN. We'll, we'll get back to you, I'm sure. Uh, let's talk about the, the misread flags. We now, now know at least 18 calls were made to the Broward County Sheriff's Office related to the shooter prior to the shooting. Let's talk about them. In February 2016, your office received a call that the shooter made a threat on Instagram to shoot up a school. One of your deputies was forwarded to Deputy Peterson at the school. What, if anything, was done with that information? Uh, I'm not sure if anything was done with that information. I do know uh, as far as notifying uh, the, the person uh, or, or go, notifying either Palm Beach Sheriff's Office or one of the local jurisdictions, depending on where uh, the killer was living at the time. What Peterson did, uh, I think, report Cruz to DCF, if I'm not mistaken. He he did uh, get received medicine. He did get medical treatment. Uh, and as I said, of those 18 calls, two of those calls are being, 16 of them we believe were, were handled exactly the way they should. Two of them, we're not sure if uh, our deputies did everything they could have or should have. That's not to say they didn't. That's not to say they did. Which are the they two, which are the two, strict, which are the two that you're looking into? Uh, one was the call from a woman in, in Massachusetts, and uh, uh, the other one uh, uh, escapes me uh, right now. But we're looking into those two calls. We will uh, absolutely find out what we did uh, or what we didn't do. And as I said uh, in a press conference uh, a few days ago, and we'll handle that accordingly. In one of them um, in September but, 2006. But, but let's not. But let's. But hold on one second, Jim. Yeah. Let's not. Th let's not forget the whole crux of this is. Giving law enforcement, giving uh, deputies, giving police officers, not only in Broward County, but in Florida and around the nation, expanded power to be a... Hell no. This motherfucker is, is pleading his case for more power. You're not getting it. If you can't handle simple cases like this, why would we give you more power, you fucking stupid dummy? You don't do your job. You don't do your job. You missed 18 calls about the shooter and you don't do your job. So why would we grant you more power? Oh man, this motherfucker is stupid. Well, to do something more than just write a report. That's the whole reason I went on CNN. Is it, and is it making, is it, sir, isn't making a threat against the school a crime? Not if, it's, not if the person doesn't have the ability to carry it out. You could say uh, a, a non-specific threat, I'm going to go to a school or other. It's not a crime. Uh, it, 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 we need it to be a crime, or at least we need it to be able to say if a person makes a non-specific threat, uh, what, a, with, uh, what an assault is is a threat coupled with the apparent ability to carry it out. If the person doesn't have the apparent ability to carry it out, well, it's not a crime. In September 2016, the shooter indicated he wanted to buy a gun. Deputy Peterson knew about that. He initiated a report. The school launched a threat assessment. At this point, you have somebody saying that they're going to shoot up a school and somebody with a gun. That's not enough? That's not enough, uh, and that's what we're trying to change. We're trying to change the law so we could either uh, arrest that person, but more importantly, get that person to a medical facility, because if you arrest the person, there's going to be a time where they get out of jail anyway. We want to get people medical help for mental illnesses, continual medical Nicholas Cruz do not have a fucking mental illness. So Y'all need to get off that fucking shit. Y'all need to get off that shit. That shit is getting old. The black family is not fucking having that shit. Get the fuck off that shit, man. Every time when y'all fucking do a mass shooting, oh, mental illness, mental... Get off that shit. This shit is old, man. It's played out. Y'all use the shit so many times. It, it, no. Get the fuck out of here with that. Medical help, and then and then when they get out of the, the the medical facility, and a doctor says they're better, that doesn't mean they're better. That means they're rehabbing. We want to be able to take their guns away from them for a long, long period of time, and that's what the you know the governor is going to be. Uh, governor Scott is going to be introducing his proposal. I read it, and it's a giant, giant step in the right well, direction. Sheriff, how about this? That. How about this? In November, the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office, not your office, but a neighboring office, responded to a call from a woman who had taken the shooter in, 
and his brother after the death of their mother. She told police that the shooter had gotten into a physical fight with her son and threatened to go get his gun and come back. She also said he had used guns to threaten people before and had put a gun to others' heads in the past. That's a crime. Were you aware of that incident? Put no, I wasn't aware of that incident, but putting a, if, if a person had a gun put to their head and they were the victim of, 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 that, of that type of incident, that's an aggravated assault, that's an absolute felony, that is a crime, and, uh, and, and a person should be arrested for that. I don't know if the victim wanted to cooperate, I don't, you know, I, it was in Palm Beach County, I don't know the nuances and the specifics of the case, but that absolutely is a crime. On November 30th, fewer than three months ago, your office received a call from a tip explicitly saying that the that Cruz could be a, quote, school shooter in the ma making. According to notes released on that call, no report was even initiated. At this point, sir, do you understand how the public seeing... Okay, family. Like I said, this shit is crazy. They don't never do their job. They never do their job, and, and they ask them for more power. Fuck out of here. I'm my family. Y'all have a good day. Love y'all.